Hello everyone and welcome to the first of the Group 4 car profiles. We have picked Mercedes, which you're probably wondering why. So let me explain why we picked Mercedes first of all. Uh, they recently got nerfed anyway. They, I think they had a weight increase or there was a power change. I can't remember exactly off the top of my head. Uh, so I don't suspect they'll, they'll get changed again anytime soon. On top of that, they're also top of the manufacturers at the moment. And I figured a car which isn't going to change and is at the top is a good little benchmark that we can set ourselves. So that is why we have picked the Mercedes-Benz SLS group 4 car now this car has a 6.3 litre v8 engine uh, and it has an interesting weight distribution of 47 to 53 and we'll come back to that later a little bit in terms of when we're actually racing the car because it very much feels like that when you're driving it now it is an fr car but it is fmr in reality as in its front end its front mid engine so the engine is in front of the driver but behind the front axle um which is why that weight distribution i imagine comes back a little bit now, in terms of the car, obviously the SLS is a real car. You know, it's out in the world. You can see them driving along the road. Uh, but the Group 4 variation is a fictional car. So it's, there's no GT4 variation of the SLS. Now, weirdly as well, the SLS, the road car, has seven gears. The SLS Group 4 car has six. Now, I don't know why that is. It seems a bit weird. Is that actual bug in the game? Is it something that they overlooked when designing the car? I don't know. But uh, even so, <laughs> the SLS Group 4 car only has six gears. Now, let's have a look at the uh, the figures, facts and figures in terms of horsepower, weight and torque. So, brake horsepower starts off at 419. That gets nerfed with balance of performance down to 402. The weight starts at 1,415 kilograms, and that goes up to 1,485 kilograms. That's 105% there. Uh, and torque obviously comes down because the power comes down, so it goes from 48.7 to 46.8 kilograms of force now when you're changing gear in this car you can very much change near the limiter it's got quite a big uh, sort of area where you can change so normally when you get to the end of the bar you can change and you won't lose any power you can also go all the way up to the rev limiter so there's no real cost there if you don't want to change gear to going all the way to the limiter other than using fuel of course because uh, obviously the higher the revs the more fuel you're using now, these scores that I normally say, I've normally been done on hard tyres with the Group 3 cars. But as we're doing the balance of performance test on medium tyres, obviously we're doing the first two courses on hard tyres and the actual bop on medium tyres. I thought I'd do the scores on the mediums uh, and then it just gives you a bit of information in that sense. So max speed, 6.4. Acceleration, 5.3. Braking, 3.4. Cornering, 3.4. And stability, 6.1. So there are the scores, there are the facts and figures, there are all the details about the SLS Group 4 car. Let's jump to Dragon Trail Seaside with our first test there of speed and power. Here we go then, across the start-finish line, and as you can see, we're about to start lap number 10. Now, we do do 10 laps at each of the circuits. We're on racing hard tyres for the first two, and this is just to get a feel for the car, how it handles certain situations. So here, for example, it's speed, power, curb handling. Uh, we've also got the chicane of death, of course, in there as well. Let's go through this uh, first chicane. I actually nail this on this lap, and you can see some tyre marks there go to the right. That was a previous lap where I span because I was really trying to push the limits in this Group 4 car. Going through here, there's a little bit of understeer in this car. Oh, actually, even a little bit. There's quite a bit of understeer in here. Uh, so when you start reaching higher speeds, it's like it's not got enough downforce on the front, and it really starts to understeer, like, quite a lot. Heading down here towards the S's, this is where I felt it most. So sometimes I was in fourth gear, sometimes I was in fifth gear. I tried fifth gear this time. Uh, I tried different variations just to see if I can get a feel for it. Didn't really make that much of a difference between 4th and 5th. The only thing I found was 4th gear would lift the front a little bit more than 5th did there. Which is why I stayed in 5th for the time. Uh, but even so, we are fairly up on our time here as we head down towards this right-hander. Now, under braking, this car seemed okay on braking in the grand scheme of it. And leaving this corner was absolutely fine. You could plant your foot. You see there, no real bouncing needed. Just plant your foot, off you go. I suspect because the Group 4 has lower power that a lot of cars are going to be like that. So we head through the chicane of death. You could absolutely flat this. Uh, I did that a number of times. Uh, I do a slight lift here just because I misjudged it slightly going through there. So you can see that time coming off a little bit, but you can do it flat. I did it flat a number of times. Um, so, you know, very easy to do the chicane of death in this car as we head towards the last corner. Now, under braking for this last corner, I actually found quite often the rear would rotate a little bit. Now, if you remember, I was talking about weight distribution of the car being 47.53. So it's acting a little bit like an MR car there. So, you know, coming off the brakes quite quickly, the rear rotates round. 
Uh, and that's obviously the weight transition of the car. We've talked about weight transition before in this game. Look at the driving school if you want to look a little bit more into that. But essentially, uh, the rear does come around if you come off the brake suddenly. Uh, as you can see there, our optimum is a 145 at 108. We use the optimums here in terms of recording our laps. No leaderboards this week because this is the first Group 4 car. So in two weeks' time, we will have a leaderboard when we can compare versus this Mercedes SLS. So we're at Interlagos now. This is more of a handling circuit with power at the end, of course. Um, so you get to see how it handles the inner sections of Interlagos. Let's get a little bit wrong there into the turn number one. It's a little bit deep, but we come through here all the same. And uh, it's fine over these curbs. There was no real issue. Again, just from a little bit of understeer on exits, I found. Uh, but nothing major, it's something that you could just lift off slightly or potentially break a little bit later, just get it pointed and square out the corner. And towards the end of this sector, we just break a little bit earlier than I would normally. Obviously, I use the tarmac on the right usually, uh, but I was having to break a little bit before the tarmac in this car here as we head up the hill now. So we see this inner section, very much a handling uh, section. So coming into here, they suffered with understeer here. So you see, I dropped a third gear there. I'm on the very limit there. I'm trying to really rotate this car as I go back up to fourth gear and into the braking zone now. Second gear, through we go. Never really used first gear here. First gear way too low in the speeds. Um, so definitely not worthwhile using. As you can see there, we are very, very delayed on the throttle there as we lead that left-hander and head up to this right-hander. Under braking. Seems fine. As I say, if you do if you do brake extremely hard and for a while the weight tran and come off it quickly, the weight transition can force the rear round, but you don't really do that here. Um, it's more slow speed corners and then one high speed corner as we hit uh, the last corner here, the left hander. And you can look, you plant your foot and off you go. Car very stable at the rear there. You can just plonk your foot and uh, yeah, up the hill we go. So round this left hander. Uh, a fairly decent lap. You can see I'm being fairly consistent as well in the times on the right hand side, you know, 38 five then three then three then three then three so you know fairly consistent times in the grand scheme of it and we cross the line there 58 zero uh, and our optimum goes down to a 37 nine six one so just breaking into that 37s so i wonder whether that is going to be a key target for the group four class we'll find out when we get to our next one next week if there's a particular group four car you want me to look at by the way put it in the comments now we're at Suzuka and this is on the racing medium tyre. Remember, we are doing the bounce performance test at Suzuka on the medium tyre, which is why we're on, we are on this tyre. Uh, so heading towards turn one, I really felt the weight distribution on this corner. Uh, so the first lap, I actually, I brought myself and went off here. You can see that I nearly do that there. Dropped to third gear. I am having to delay a little bit there as I wait for the car to turn as I leave the first corner there. Then coming into here, really hard for the SLS I found in the S's because you're sort of bottom end of fourth, but you want to be top end of third, but you can't be top end of third because you just hit the limiter. So you're very much uh, in, a, in a state of patience, basically. You're having to wait, and it was kind of frustrating a little bit. As you can see there, I go to a third and then back up to fourth. Uh, again, you'll suffer with understeer on that left-hander there as we head towards Degna one and two. Again, we've got an optimum there around the 207.0s at the moment. So are we looking at the 206s as the class sort of uh, target there? I don't know. We'll find out soon, I guess, when we start whacking in some more Group 4 cars uh, as we leave Degna 2 there. Obviously, this is lap number 5. Um, we do keep pushing throughout this. So in fact, I get a very similar lap to this about two laps later. I think it's 8,000 off. Uh, but we'll have a look at that at the end, of course, as we normally do. The hairpin, absolutely no problems. You could break. You just had to delay the turn a little bit because it did understeer on exit a little bit. But you could plant your foot. This car is very stable just planting your foot. Was on hard tyres, very much expected on medium tyres, but even more so on soft tyres when we do the Interlagos race. Hitting Spoon, again, suffering with a little bit of understeer there. I did spin out twice, I think, at Spoon. Uh, I say I pushed the limits, and that's why I look at optimums, and not necessarily faster slaps. And I just show you my faster slap as we now head up to 130R. 130R, again, a very tricky corner in this car because of that understeer. You know, it really wants to just push itself wide. It really just doesn't have the high speed grip that you'd want from the SLS. And coming through here, a number of times I ran wide just going off there. As you can see, I'm using all the curb there and in towards uh, the Casio Triangle here. So literally just a little bit too deep there, but we bring it back here. Third gear, I did try second a number of times, but third gear was definitely the better gear to be in. As we leave that corner now, you can see we've lost a little bit of time there versus a previous lap. We head towards the line there, we get a 206.922. And we get a, uh, a 928, I think, late, uh, like two laps later maybe. Let's just have a quick gander there. Uh, yes, we do. Look, look at that. I mean, we've got a good memory, apparently. But our optimum down to a 206.6 there. Uh, so, you know, the time's been varied. That's why we take the optimum here. 
let's jump to the race now. So obviously, start the race with testing acceleration. We're not doing the 100 this time because we can't actually make the corner if we do 100. So it's 0 to 90, and that's around where the 0 to 100 was in the Group 3 category. Uh, we turn charge control off after we've changed the gear for the first time. And there we have it. So 7.966 there, 0 to 90 miles an hour in the SLS Group 4 car. So... We are going to do, I'm going to show you a lap. So we're on racing softs here. So we're on times 10 tyre, times 10 fuel. Uh, and basically, we'll get to the line. The minute we see the word finish, we measure the fuel and we measure the tyres. And then we have the overall race time as well. And we can put all that together and happy days. We should have like a bounce performance for when there's tyre fuel uh, and also the Suzuka without that as well. Because obviously, bounce performance is complicated with tyres and fuel multipliers. So we're just seeing, is it hard on tyres or is it easy on tyres? Is it hard on fuel or easy on fuel? And we should be able to get an idea. Now, Group 4 is a very much more complicated um, set of affairs because we have four drivetrains, not two, uh, and front-wheel drive and all-wheel drive are in this category as well. So it's not necessarily that a better tire, overall tyre wear across all four tyres is good because, to give you an, ex a, an example, obviously the previous BOP FS were their front tyres were ruined and even if they had better front tyre wear than anybody else they accelerate with them so they couldn't actually accelerate out of corners um obviously that's changed with the recent bounce performance and i imagine that will change again very soon so even so even so we i need to look at how to measure that properly to give you a good idea but we take the measurements anyway and then we have the data there for how we can measure that properly so coming towards the end of this lap now we are going to advance to lap number four here just to finish it off i'll just show you a lap just to show you how i'm driving really uh, and as we head towards the line obviously we've got a lot more fuel than we do in the group threes because uh, a lot less power there uh, being used in this group four category and we head towards the line uh, it's going to be around 20 percent i think let's see what it gets when we hit the line here and uh there we go. So 22% there for the SLS in terms of the fuel. Uh, so that's obviously our benchmark. Uh, and we're going to jump towards the uh, the old tyres now and do our old tyres indicators here. So top left, 71%. Top right, 71%. Pretty good, to be fair. Uh, and then the, the bottom, 86 and 80. So it really does use the fronts more than the rears. Uh, but remember, it uses the rear to accelerate. So that's kind of the difference here. Uh, obviously, it's going to struggle with the understeer. And it's obviously scrubbing the tyres a lot, which is why the front tyre wear is being used a little bit more. But in terms of a uh, race time there as well, we have 6.36. So it's around 30 seconds slower than the Group 3 class, if you're interested in that. But that's going to be it for this SLS Group 4 car profile. Uh, in terms of brake balance, by the way, I'll probably go one or two to the rear, just FYI. But uh, thanks very much for watching, and I will see you in another car profile very soon.